Hello everyone, welcome to this year's Nugget. If you have any questions during this session, I'll be available in the live chat to answer them. My name is Jason Skefka. I've been a part of Team Netrio since 2021, working in the role of TAS engineer. Part of my job involves teaching clients about the many features and uses of their OmniCenter product. To that end, let's talk about dashboarding. These are GUI-based views that Netrio users have on their computers. Typically, they provide real-time metrics with information that updates after each new polling cycle. Dashboards and reports are the primary method clients use to view information about their environment. However, reports are used to obtain data about a specific point in time. If you want to obtain real-time info, we have a variety of dashboards that can meet your needs. All right, you can reach the dashboard customization page by following this menu tree. Under the administration menu in the upper bar, select users near the bottom, followed by custom dashboard. This page shows all current existing dashboards broken out by type. Let's take a look at the widgets column. Notice that if you hover over the number in that column, it will list which widgets that dashboard is using. First, let's discuss the generic dashboard. This is the first of two types of basic dashboards that can be created. Generic dashboards are built with specific user roles in mind, such as managers, tier two or three support engineers, or your first response command center. Next, we'll review the device group dashboards. A customized device group dashboard is intended to replace the built-in default dashboards seen when viewing a device group such as site category or strategic group. By customizing a device group dashboard, you can provide a different layout for these groups. You can even provide different information for different groups, such as having different information from one physical site to the next. To create a new dashboard, you'll need to provide three pieces of information shown here. The name you provide will be the name of the dashboard as it appears in menus, displays, and the dashboard itself. The type specifies whether this will be a generic or device dashboard. As you can see here, the device types are site, category, and business workflow. Finally, the access level restricts access to the dashboard based on user access level. Only those users with the appropriate permissions and above will have access to the dashboard. All right, let's go ahead and put a name in here. We'll call this a sample dashboard. We'll keep the type as generic and set the access levels user. And go ahead and add it. So a dashboard is an arrangement of widgets that display select information. Therefore, when creating a new dashboard, consider the type of template you'll be using when laying out the order of the widgets. It's recommended that you draw a rough mock-up of what you want to show with your dashboard. I've got an example here. As you can see here, you've got the dividers to separate the various widgets, a map, and then the various types of widgets that would go inside. That way you can see roughly how this is going to appear when you're presenting it to the various stakeholders. Uh, keep in mind that the larger the set of information you use, the longer it will take the dashboard to load. To reduce page load time, remember to filter the reporting using instance selection options. For your dashboard mockup, a simple box layout like the one shown here will help set the design when building your dashboard. You can use that design to get feedback from the group you plan to make the dashboard for. There are a number of widgets you can use in the generic dashboard. Seen here is a full list of available widgets. Note that this list is different from what's available in the site category or business workflow widgets as that dashboard type is intended to replace the view of the default dashboard used for those groupings. Many of these widgets require additional information once they're selected. Please remember, once you add these widgets, you will first need to save the dashboard, 
and then modify the digit widget before saving the dashboard again. All right, so with all that in mind, let's go through the steps to create a dashboard. Uh, we're on this page already. Um, the narrow wide narrow layout is the one that I'll use for the dashboard that I'm going to make. And usually what I like to do is put the dividers in first. So for this one, with the number of widgets that are going in, I'll throw in a divider two times on the first column. I'll then put in three dividers for the next one. And sometimes you will need to load the divider or the widget, I suppose, above the level just so that it sticks in and then rearrange it accordingly. And then I'll just do one divider for the last section. The widgets that I will use are top talkers here for the last one. I'll do strategic group in the middle. I will look for a device down at the bottom over here. A site status summary will be helpful. We'll put that underneath the strategic group. Let's grab a reboot report. And then bandwidth utilization. All right, so I have all the widgets that I want. Let me go ahead and save this. And now that I've saved it, you'll see that save to change options is gone and it says options are not set. Now the usefulness of the dividers is you can put title information inside of it. So for this one, I will put bandwidth utilization and it will give a title for the widget that's underneath it. Do the same for the divider. We'll call this one gateway status. We'll pull up Linux servers, so we'll call this Linux server status. And then for the reboot report, we'll do 24 hour reboot. For the site status summary, we'll just call it site status summary. And then for the top talkers, we'll call this top five bandwidth. Go ahead and save that. And then just one more save to make sure that my changes so far are locked in. And now we'll set the options for the various items. So for bandwidth utilization, let's do site traffic. This will be a simple interface. And then for the interface description, we will do device. And then we'll set a device down here. For the gateway status, I'll want a device in question. So if I go looking for I found that if I go by functional group, I can pick all devices and that gives me a list of everything. And then in this case, I will look for the HQ gateway. All right, for the strategic group, since we're doing Linux servers, let's pull up the Linux server strategic group. Then I'll save my changes again. And then just to check really quick that things are showing up, we'll go ahead and go back over to the custom dashboards. Again, from administration. 
and then users custom dashboards to see everything and I'll look for the one that I've made so far so sample you'll see sample dashboard is here created by me let's go ahead and go back in to build it all right and then we'll continue on here so for the reboot report I'll set options rebooted yes within 24 hours and then for the top talkers, this one requires some of the most configuration, but we're going to do, let's see here. Business workflow. Do all devices again. And then there is no filter for the device attribute, but for the statistical group, we are interested in bandwidth. And then we'll do percentage. For the variable, we'll do everything. And then we'll do, within the last hour, I'm gonna change this over to five. And then let's go ahead and save options. And then finally save one more time. So you can see here, this is the number of widgets that are added. Again, this is the layout that we're using that allows for the three columns. If I want to change the access level, I can do so here. I can even rename it in place if I needed to. Additional widgets are listed here. Uh, you scroll down, and then if you need to scroll down further, you've got more choices here all the way down to the bottom. Um, there is a full listing available, and it is as simple as the grabbing and then dropping in where you want it. We're dragging it back out. All right, so we've built a dashboard. Now let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to preview here. You can see the name of the dashboard is here. We've got that bandwidth utilization showing up. Here's the name as presented in the divider, and then the actual widget. Here's the status of the HQ Gateway device. Linux server status as a strategic group shows the various servers and their states for the host services, thresholds, and anomalies. For the site status, we've got a color-coded indicator on the number of sites that are up and that are having issues. And the top five bandwidth is here for the number of devices. I can also scroll down and show you the report, and then the additional five devices are listed as well here too. All right, so that is a dashboard created as well as demonstrated. All right, now that your dashboard is created, let's set it to a location you can quickly reach in the future. So let's go ahead and go back to administration and then users and custom dashboards. There's two options available for quickly getting to your dashboards. The first is setting dashboards as a quick view. The quick view section is available at the top bar and you can see a list of quick view options that are already available. If we find the dashboard that we've created and we toggle the quick view option and then we reload the page, you will see that sample dashboard is now listed as a quick view. This makes it easier to get to that particular dashboard without needing to locate it from the dashboard customization menu. And then to remove it from the quick view menu, it's as simple as hitting the toggle a second time. Now, if I reload the page under quick views, sample dashboard is no longer present. There is another way to quickly access a dashboard from a user level. If specific users need to see information when they log into Netrio, you can go to users and then you can go to edit add web users. I'll locate myself here. So Jay Skufka and edit. 
there's an option under user dashboard to set what dashboard appears on the home page. So if I change the consolidated dashboard over to the sample dashboard I created and save changes, now if I go to the home menu, you'll see that my sample dashboard is the one that shows up. Changing it back is as simple as going to users, edit add web users, locating the user in question again, editing, and then changing back to the default consolidated dashboard again. Once I save changes, and I go back to the home menu, I'm back on the consolidated page. So as you can see, dashboarding features in OmniCenter allow for a great deal of customization. When combined with other Netro tools, you can create dashboards that are well suited to the unique needs of your organization. And that's it for dashboarding. Feel free to connect with me here on the Nugget platform. And if you have any lingering questions, I'll be here in the live chat to answer them. Thank you for attending.